What I'm going to walk you through is a series of functions on the Passport for both cashiers and managers. Let's start with the sign-on. Each cashier does have their own unique ID and password. You'll see first the cashier would actually touch a, the sign-on button and accept the uh, privacy question. They would enter their own ID, which is going to be assigned to them by their manager, and they would enter their own password. Now this password needs to be at least seven digits in length based upon PCI compliance. Uh, and those settings are configurable in the passport managers area. We'll discuss that in a little bit. Once you've actually signed onto the screen, you actually see from a cashier's perspective all the different areas of the screen. And we're going to talk in a little more detail about each one of these. And I'm going to use this opportunity to also speak about how this is in comparison to where you may be coming from. For many of our G site customers, they're used to the fuel taking most of the screen up because most of the functions were actually located on their keyboard. With Passport, uh, you need to remember that since we do not have a primary keyboard necessary for cashier functions, we have to make the most of the room on the screen with big buttons that make it easy for the cashier to uh, maneuver through a standard transaction. The first area I want to cover uh, is the forecourt area. The reason I do this is because for many cashiers, understanding fuel, the fuel process and the forecourt area tends to be the most intimidating for them. So let's look at the fueling area first. Notice here you'll see there are six dispensers set up for this particular site. This area where I'm actually moving around with the mouse is the fuel GUI. Our GUI stands for graphic user interface and it's scalable. Uh, if you had 12 dispensers Instead of seeing six pumps, you would actually have two lines of dispensers that would show you 12 fueling positions. This area actually can be expandable up to 24 fueling positions in this current mode. A uh, Passport will actually support up to 32 fueling positions in its maximum configuration at this time. Now just a few things I want to make sure you feel comfortable about. Uh, one is we do have buttons you see over here in the left, the all stop button. Now actually what that is, is if someone is doing something you need to hit an all stop uh, because someone uh, has knocked over uh, a dispenser or they're, they're doing something um, not allowed on the forecourt. This does stop fuel flow but does not cut power. This is not a, a electrical all stop. There is a hard all stop that will be at your location, but this does stop fuel flowing at the particular fueling positions. Now notice once uh, the same button that you use to, to select the all stop is used to clear it. So you can hit the clear button and hit the yes to reauthorize and everything is as it was. I'm going to show you just a little bit about fueling transactions. Notice here when I'm just off the particular dispenser to fuel, you see over here on the right hand side uh, real time money for that dispenser uh, going at that time. And uh, if I did want to stop that particular dispenser, I could and resume it. Say, ma'am, please get out of the car or sir, please put out that cigarette. Notice it will be resumed and continue. Um, once that sale is completed, it will actually be posted to the area up here in the top left corner of the screen um, which is for any post uh, fueling transaction or suspended sale. Notice that sale actually shows up on the top left corner and the cashier can either select on the bottom side right here for that particular dispenser or can select pump six and notice that sale will immediately be brought down to the current receipt area which is the area directly below. Uh, this is showing the current receipt, uh, the current transaction. Now notice once I've brought that transaction in, I can press my tender key, which is uh, the forms of payment that you can pay out for that transaction. And there are quick payment keys located here. These are configurable um, for whatever dollar denomination works best for your site. We also include the exact amount and the next highest dollar and you'll see that the tenders that are over here on the right hand side these are also configurable 
Uh, the base passport does come with six predefined tenders, but the manager and owner has the ability to change those and create more if necessary. Now this person is actually going to pay uh, $16. Notice that uh, it will list the change due for that particular transaction. Actually, also this person is getting a discount for paying cash because we are doing a fuel discount for cash sales and the transaction has been completed. Now we'll walk through a few of the other types of fueling transactions and you'll see just a few of the functions that we have put into Passport that allow a cashier to uh, please the customer to move the line faster and to handle those exception cases that often get the cashier um, a headache on a daily basis. One being, uh, let's just use for example, a person is uh, comes in and buys a, a 20 ounce coffee and throws a uh, $10 bill on the counter and says put the rest on pump two. Now uh, instead of trying to do two transactions, what the cashier will do is uh, ring up that 20 ounce coffee, coffee press the prepay button, um, and there is a button over here called balance. They select the balance button, and when they do that, they can then select a payment, which it defaults to cash, and let's say they gave you $10, and you'll notice that the difference for the coffee has been applied to pump six. The cashier did not have to do two transactions. This balance prepay makes it much easier on the cashier and in the long run uh, saves a few steps and pleases the customer. Now let's say the next person walks in and does a standard prepay. They hit the prepay button. Notice there are grades that you can select but are not required to be used. Um, but they are optional for a customer. Let's say he's going to pay $10 on pump 2 and he selects his payment key but he actually is not on pump 2. He is actually on pump 4. Now what does the cashier do in this situation? Um, well they need to move that prepay cell and instead of voiding it and doing it again what we actually have the ability to do in Passport is to stop the authorization for that particular pump and you'll see a button appears here called move that the cashier can then select and then the system will say select the destination dispenser for this prepay they may then select pump 4 notice it will automatically move that cell to pump 4 reauthorize that dispenser and the customer is now satisfied because they're fueling on the right dispenser at that time. These are just small examples of where a cashier can react to uh, ever-changing environment with uh, their customers and not have uh, these large exceptions that they don't know how to get out of the situation in that case. Transitioning from our forecourt area, we're now going to talk a little bit about how you can sell items through the passport system. Notice here above the forecourt area you have a series of buttons with pictures located on them. For those who are familiar with our G site system, uh, you used a series of key sequences called a macro key that would memorize particular PLUs that you may sell and you would tie those to a particular button on the keyboard. Within Passport we actually use speed keys. Speed keys are quick lookups to particular POU items. They uh, can be up to three levels down, meaning you can go into three different submenus. Notice here on our screen that the buttons are, are set up a little differently uh, if it's either an actual item that you're selling versus a menu that you're going into. For instance, the coffee is actually a submenu because it has a shade of blue. If I were to select this particular button, I would then see in a shade of green particular items that I can sell. For, for like example, a 16 ounce coffee or a refill. And notice there's a home button that takes me to the top level. What makes a good speed key? Well, if you're scanning at your store, Good examples for speed keys are items that either don't scan well, items that are messy, 
that you may not want to scan or you may spill something. Items that you sell a lot of, items that may be restricted, items that are like prepared foods that may or deli foods, items that you may sell outside like uh, wood or uh, salt, bags of ice, things that may be sitting outside of the store, and also car wash. If you sell that, that has to be a speed key. What's the optimal layout for that? Well, you know, logical groups is the way to go with setting up speed keys. So fountain drinks, coffee, fruit, newspapers. Notice here's all the different newspapers I sell. You also want to make sure that the location is is convenient for your cashiers. Uh, the top line and the left hand side are what are the easiest and to the eye and easiest to catch a cashier's attention. Uh, also just one thing to remember too is that a speed key or a particular item can live in several menus. It is not bound to just one menu. So it's, if it's convenient to have a fountain drink located under the food area because you may sell a hot dog and a drink at the same time, you can do that. It's just to help make your system more efficient. Also you have the ability to sell to open departments. There is a key here on our function area that lets you toggle to our open department keys. Now notice here, these are also set in green. You can actually have names and pictures associated with them, but that, instead of selling a particular item, you're now selling to a particular department, so grocery department, which may be $5 to a particular grocery department, or something that's non-taxable. You know, you could actually hit $5 first and hit non-taxable. Just hitting the department itself will not sell or give a default price. You have to enter a price either before or after for that particular department. You also have to tell Passport in the manager's workstation area that this department is something that you allow to have as a speed key, a key that you can sell to. Uh, just because you may have 50 departments doesn't mean you actually have 50 department keys that are here available for you to use. That is something that needs to be configured. Now let's talk a little bit about the function keys. The area here in the middle of the screen is the area where all the passport function keys reside. One thing to note is that during a transaction we show different function keys than when you're not in a transaction. This is a benefit of a graphic user interface in comparison to a keyboard based system where you have all the keys available at any point in time and cashiers must be trained when not to press a particular key. Note here we are in a transaction and there are things that I can do such as suspend the transaction and go out and get my wallet and come back. Passport can suspend multiple transactions and those transactions will actually reside in this area when you have suspended them. I could do a price override. If a price is incorrect in the system I can uh, change the characteristic of an item to say it's food stampable uh, if this is something that had been mislabeled and we are supporting EBT or food stamps at our location I can change the quantity of a particular item uh, that can be done several ways but one is through the function button the other one is used through using the plus or minus key to increment or decrement a particular item I've sold. And you also can do it prior to selling the item by hitting the at key. For instance, if I hit five at and then select a hot dog, it would uh, sell five of those. There's also the ability to void items. Any particular item that's in this transaction, I can void and say he decided not to get a 16 ounce coffee. I can void that off. It does not have to be the last transaction and it does not function as the old school error correct. You can void multiple trans items in a transaction and they are all tracked in the cashier's till report. You could also void the entire transaction and instead of just canceling it, we actually have configurable reason codes that a person will have to select to actually end that transaction and that reason code will be printed on the receipt at the end of the transaction uh, on the receipt printer. 
Notice that when you're not in a transaction, you do see different functions residing here in the same area. I could do a price check. I could calibrate my touch screen based upon the way I touch it. I could do a safe drop of money, either on demand. There's also an indicator here that would show up if I have too much money in my drawer to tell me I need to do a safe drop. I could do a no sell. Once again, no sales will, will, will pop open the cash drawer, but you have a reason code you have to select. I could do a refund. If a person's returning a particular item, I can refund it and I give that person back their money. I can also uh, do some things like paid ins and paid outs. And old school, um, a vendor's paying me or I'm paying out to a vendor, I'm paying out to get supplies or maybe even how I handle lottery. I could also uh, search for a particular receipt in the past and we do keep those receipts around for a period of time up to uh, 30 days. 30 uh, days is a default to go look back for a receipt. You can actually go hit that and look through the receipts and find the one in question and then just hit the printer button and it will print for you. I can actually go look through the calendar at a particular date and time and look for that tr particular transaction. It's also available here on the fuel area if you want to look at a particular pump and look for a receipt. That's available as well. I could clean my screen, which if it gets dirty, the touch screen is a way not to sell multiple items. And there are some things as far as a security perspective. I can audit my till without closing it if you suspect someone is taking money it's a way to count their drawer down without having them uh, close their till. I could change my password which is if I think my password has been compromised I can then change my password to something new. Um, I can go into my dispenser menu which allows me to do certain things such as a test fuel transaction if someone's calibrating my dispensers and I don't want to cash out that uh, calibration sale to uh, my drawer. I can change my dispenser options from primary to secondary pump control. It's for instance, when at night I may run full prepay only at my location or attributes of my store may run differently. I can activate a fuel price change if it has already been configured by the manager and I'm waiting to change the price sign. I can receive dispenser totals on demand from the dispensers and it will tell me what each dispenser's volume is as well as go to a tank monitor device that I may have configured at my store and get my tank monitor readings on demand. All of those can be printed at your receipt printer. There's also a menu called uh, tools that allows me to take uh, either to do things such as doing a store close from the cashier workstation, enabling or disabling my car wash, or CREN merchandising if I'm merchandising items at the CREN, as well as taking you to the manager's workstation. Now if this is a combo device, a, a manager's workstation slash cashier workstation, this button will be active and will allow you to go to the manager's workstation section so that the manager or cashier who's ever allowed to sign on to this can actually do certain configuration items.